Bienvenue. Welcome everybody to YouTube Space. Make some noise for the one and only Ibrahim Malouf. Thank you. Hello, Ibrahim. Hello, Ibrahim. Welcome. Come on, sit down, sit down. Let's do this real quick. Thank you for being here, everyone. So cool to have you. <laughs> well, first of all, thank you very, very much for, uh, for having me as a, as a part of this, for inviting me to, yeah. uh, to be here. Who else could do this? <laughs> Fred Yonet is one of the best musicians I've ever met in my life. So I'm so happy that you're with us and hosting this, uh, this um, YouTube live It's an live honor. Session. It's an honor. Truly, it's an honor. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here. Man, you've been busy. You've been mm. busy. Mm -hmm. My gosh. I mean, I'm, my head is spinning thinking about what's been, uh, what's been happening with your schedule these days. I mean, you have this amazing release coming out. The, yeah, today. The, the, this, that's why we're here. That's why we're here. We're celebrating the release of this crazy concert. Yeah. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing to, to, uh, to, to watch your career. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, you've been incredibly busy. Uh, a lot of things have been happening. And uh, I'm, uh, today, I'm, I really want to focus on, on, on this, on the, uh, the release, the celebration of, uh, of your career in, in Europe and, uh, and the launch of a, a blossoming one mm -hmm. on this side of the world. Yeah, it's, you know, we did like this uh, DVD, CD that, you know, like everyone uh, launches now, but, but, but also we did like a USB key. Did you? Yeah, I think here in the US you can buy it on, on maybe Amazon or something and import it. Okay. But it's, a, it's a USB <laughs> key. And actually, I brought one for you. Look. Oh, really? Look how Thank it looks you. like. It's really a, a USB key. Oh, this is great. You have the full concert, three and a half hours, full HD uh, audio and video. It's crazy. Yeah, you can watch it at home on this size. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So we have some VIPs tonight here uh, who are going to uh, witness Friends, this. Friends, uh, family, and uh, people we work with. Very yeah. selected audience. And we have the, uh, the entire rest of the world right now on YouTube mm -hmm. watching us. Bonsoir. Yeah. Yes. Salam alaikum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, actually, you know, the, the, the music we, I wanted to start with, mm -hmm. it's called Yahala, which means welcome. And since I feel really welcomed in the U.S. too, so I was um, expressing my, uh, um, how thankful I am for being welcomed. In the, it's a pleasure to work with uh, Quincy Jones Productions, pleasure to be here in YouTube, pleasure to have you, pleasure to have all my musicians here with us. Well, congratulations uh, yeah. to you, all the best, all the best. Let's, uh, let's get right into it. Um, I think there's, there's a question on everybody's mind right now, uh, and uh, I want to I wanna just go straight into it. Why did you decide to have me as a host? <laughs> because I want to play with you, man. So at the end of this session, you're going to be playing with us. There you go. Yeah. There you go. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, so yeah. listen, you, you, you created about 12 album solos, mm -hmm. just about. You, you produced yeah, studio, music. Studio and live, yeah, all together. Wow, you produce music for for movies as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love working with. Um, I love doing um, movie soundtracks. Um, I love producing music for other artists. Uh, um, this is something I yeah, it's maybe the only thing I really know how to do. What <laughs> else? What else? What about the? I think I, I read somewhere that you did music for dance reviews as well. Yeah, also. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So how how did you become that guy? What's what's the story behind it, behind Maluf? Oh, and first of all. Okay, my dad is a huge fan of yours. Yeah. Uh, yeah, his name is Dominic. He's probably watching right now. He's a huge fan of yours. But we disagree on how to say your last name. So Malouf. M Malouf. Malouf. Malouf, yeah. Ibrahim Malouf. Ibrahim Malouf. All right, let's get the record straight. So what's the story? How did you, how did you become that guy? You know, I grew up in a family uh, where um, classical music was uh, maybe the most important thing. But I'm not talking only about Western music. Classical Western music, of course, my, my father and my mother both are uh, classically trained musicians, high level musicians, but also a classical Arabic music and Eastern music. So I, I, I've been raised in this double culture of classical musics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like everyone, when I was uh, seven, eight years old, I started listening to Michael Jackson, Quincy Jones Productions. Oh, <laughs> and, that's how it started. And I'm not saying this because you're here, guys. <laughs> no, but you really, uh, I've been listening to this, like, it, it, it was a, such a, it, it blew my mind, you know, and, uh, and I started even dancing in my room and trying to, this pop culture was uh, something amazing. And then I discovered jazz uh, through this. 
and then other kind of music, you know, ethnic music, Indian music, African music, all kinds of music. And I guess now what I'm trying to do is to mix everything I love and to work hard on it, uh, as hard as I have been working to, to, to play classical music as, um, as much uh, uh, accurate I could be, you know? I don't know if, you, if I can say this this way. And this is, this is by, by my work is, I guess, a mix of everything I've been raised in. Katya, so your, your parents were both, are both musicians? Mm -hmm. My mom is a piano player and my uh -huh. father a trumpet player. And he, my father taught me everything on this instrument. Wow, mm. wow, that's, that's amazing. What kind of, what kind of music uh, did your parents, I mean, I understand you, you, you had this, your, this attraction for, for pop music and, and, and amongst other things for Quincy Jones Productions, as we all are. Uh, but um, what, what, what kind of music did your parents play around the house? Mostly Baroque music. Uh, my father um, used to tour a lot as a Baroque musician and Arabic music on, on the same instrument. He invented this quarter tone trumpet uh -huh. and I, he, he put this instrument in my hands when I, when I was seven years old. So I used to play the Arabic music on trumpet and Baroque music because he was a huge fan of Baroque music. So I would say most of all this and Um Kulthum, Abdul Wahab and all the traditional Arabic uh, singers. Um, that's mostly what we used to listen to at home. I was going to ask you about Um Karsum because um, I, be, I became a fan of yours when um, when Grand Corps Malade reached out to to me to you know so we could work on this album together yeah. uh, his uh, his his record and the first thing I did is uh, I YouTubed you mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> and once I YouTubed you of course I found Beirut that was like my first impression uh, of of your work and I think about six minutes into it I thought I really felt like I was listening to a human voice. I really yeah. felt like I was listening to Hum Kalsum si singing. Yeah. Uh, how, how much of, a, of, a, of an influence has her voice had on, on your musicality? Uh, I think I knew how to sing this kind of, what we call tarab in Arab music, which is the, all those the, the, the makams. I used to sing this even before starting to speak, you know, <laughs> and it's my mother language. Uh, like when I was two years old, I used to do, mm, you know, this kind of do Arabic. That again, do that again. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> you know, this kind of, you know, this, this um, what we, we say in French, melisme, mel le melisme, the, the, um, I don't know, can you say melisme in, in English, maybe? Uh, melismes, yeah, melismes. Uh, so th this is what I, uh, this is my mother language. And after that, I, I try to put harmony on this and then rhythms mm -hmm. and then all kinds of rhythms together in order to, to put together something that sounds like me. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, really, um, it's really fascinating. Um, I have to say something also is that uh, I have the chance to have a, a, a wonderful band playing with me for many, many years now. Can I, can I give the names of Stéphane Galland on the drums? She's one of the best, best drummers. Eric Lenini on keyboards here. François Delporte on the, on the guitar. And uh, Arda and Sam and Alejandro are like our guests tonight on the trumpets. Yeah. So. Yeah, this is, uh, this is my, like my one of, I guess, uh, one, of, one of the great pleasure of doing what I'm doing is to have the chance to have uh, another, an, uh, another family than the original family, you know? <laughs> and this is my family here. And so I'm, I'm very happy to be able to do this live session with my family. I was going <laughs> to bring them up because I was going to ask you, how did you, get, how did you choose these guys? What, what, because they are the, the best ones. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna hear that. Oh, that's easy. They're just the best ones. <laughs> and how did you guys meet? Is there like a back backstory? Were, um, they, were they already a band before? You know, they, no. Some of them knew each other for so long. Like those guys were like best friends when they were like uh, ten or something. And you know, and Francois is my best friend, and we are, we are we are like a team. You know, we are we are friends, and that's uh, that's uh, yeah. That's why I called it family music. My musical family. And I think that those musicians, that each one of them has already his musical life independently, uh, are uh, also a little bit like me. They speak the same language. They understand ethnic music. They understand pop and rock. And you know, they they they, they know how to make a music. Um, they they know how to play in order to make you dance. But also, they they know how to make you think. They know how to make you feel. 
you know, when you, you know, they, they can mix all those things in, in one music. I think we speak that same language, and that's why we um, are so, we, we get along very easily. When, when, you, play, uh, when you play your instrument, what, what is happening? Because I notice you close your eyes a, a, a lot when you perform. Mm. What's happening behind the curtains of your eyes when you play? What do you see? Do you see anything? Do you see shapes, colors? Mm -hmm. do you, wha you, what's you just happening? said it, shapes, colors. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that w w um, it's nothing. How, how to express this in a way that people uh, don't think that I'm weird? Uh, <laughs> you know, when you when you compose something, you always have a story behind it. But it's not necessarily a story with words. It's just a story of emotions. And when I close my eyes and I'm playing, I see those emotions as colors and forms. That's a matter of fact. I don't know how to explain this, but that's it. How it is, yeah. Um, I had a question regarding your childhood. What was your first musical voice? Was it was it actually the trumpet, or because you sing, you play the keyboard, you play percussion, you whistle? What, what was the, the real, the first musical voice that? What, what what did you use to first express this music that was happening in your head? I think it must be trumpet. Okay. It must be, because my father used to play trumpet when I was in my mother's uh, wound. Yeah, and, uh, and yeah, I, I, it must be trumpet. I know, I don't know, actually. Uh, I think it's, it must be trumpet. And, and maybe that's why I, I felt comfortable with this instrument. It's, it sounded familiar. And, you know, when you're, um, when you're young also. I mean, I, I didn't, I wanted to play the in trumpet to be close to my father. But I wasn't feeling that this instrument was necessarily mine. Um, I, I feel I feel I'm I'm more a composer than uh, than a musician. And what I enjoy the most, like for example, what we're gonna do together after that a talk, uh, the music we're gonna do together. I I love playing trumpet. I love playing keyboards. I love doing all this. But more than anything, I love to feel that my music is existing. It's like part of uh, me being shared, like a part of my intimacy, shared with people. So yeah, this is, this is the, for me the most important part of what I do. So what, what fed your love for music as a child? Mm. And you'll see where I'm going after this. Well, you know? I, I, say, I say, you know, when, when I was young, I used to travel to, uh, to Lebanon. I was born in Beirut uh -huh. in 1980, so in the, right in the middle of the civil war. And when I, right, very quickly, my, my parents moved to France. And every single year, even during the Civil War until 91, 92, we used to go to Lebanon for the holiday, for the summer vacations. So when everyone was going to, you know, to the, the beach, to South France, to Nice, or I don't know where, when we got back to school in September and the teacher was asking me, or I was asking everyone in the class, how were you, how, how was the holidays, where did you go? And my answer was always, I went to a country where there is a civil war. Yeah. And I think this grew up in my head in, um, in something very powerful that my aim, my goal in my life is to be able one day to, to not to leave, but not to live, but to, to see Lebanon and Beirut and my mother um, country, you say, mm -hmm. uh, looking beautiful and being beautiful and being a nice place to be. So I wanted to be an architect. And I wanted to rebuild Beirut. And after some time, I realized that <laughs> I was good in maths, but I was not enough good in drawing. We're going to go back to that. We're going yeah. to go back. So hold, hold on, hold that thought. Now, the, now you're feeding more questions. But before, the, I just want to point out something that you, you just said that is really inspiring, I think, at least from my perspective, that you were traveling through a world that was suffering so, so much destruction. And that's actually what fed your creativity. I think it's really, it's a deep, deep, deep message, especially in the world we live today, where, you know, I mean, I'm not going to go political or religious about this, but we, th this, is, this is a beautiful message that anybody can learn from. Even in, in the midst of the greatest stages of destruction, there's always a path to create something beautiful. 
Well, you know, the, I've, I think every time, every one of us <laughs> um, goes through something that makes him or her struggle, mm. every suffer is a chance to create something new, you know? What, what, what do you think the process is about? I mean, what, what is it that... How, how do you how do you, do you feel this as emotions? Do you think it's channeled I think, from? I'm gonna tell you. I think it's just about the reality. Uh -huh. When reality, when when truth or reality disappoints you, you try to create a new reality. Ah, and this is how I feel. Yeah, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have a, a ritual? before you perform on stage? Is there, is there something you like to do, and if you don't do it, you're gonna feel like, ah, oh, shoot, I uh, need five more minutes? It's not a ritual, it's like a non-ritual. Oh. So I need to do nothing <laughs> like a ritual. <laughs> I, I just need to go to my musician's talk, enjoy my time, laugh, spend uh -huh. some good time, and not think about what's gonna happen. That is a ritual. That, <laughs> that is a that's ritual. That's what I mean. That, that chaos again. <laughs> We're going back to it. You're yeah. feeding from chaos. Yeah. <laughs> that's again, beautiful. <laughs> again, you're right. <laughs> chaos. And you know, improvisation is also to uh, build up something from nothing. Right. So that's maybe why I love improvisation. Um, did you always have a clear vision for where your career has taken you and where it's heading today? Not really. Uh, it's very difficult. It's, you know, everything that happened to me since 20 years when I started doing this trumpet, classical trumpet competitions. Actually, some of the guys here, I met them a long time ago when we were doing this trumpet, classical trumpet competitions. And, uh, you know, when you're doing this, you don't really know where this is leading you. You just want to improve yourself and do your best. And when I was 17, 18, 19 years old doing all those competitions, I, I just wanted to reach the minimum that my father allowed me to do, which was at least do what he did, which is going to the, um, uh, the, National, Trumpet, uh, the National Music Conservatoire Supérieur in, in Paris, Conservatoire National Supérieur de Paris, and, and to reach this. This was the minimum I, I could do. And after that, I could choose whatever I wanted to do. So I started by doing lots of trumpet and trumpet competition, classical music. But in the same time, in my head, I, I was hearing lots of things. I was composing lots of things. At some point, I met people who introduced me to other people, who introduced me to other people. And I met you, and I met thousands of great artists all over the world. And every time, I was like a sponge, you know, learning from everyone and trying to bring some of them into my music and into my culture, trying to bring myself uh, into their culture and, and try to mix all this. I was, I'm just learning, you know, stuff all the time. And this is my, I, I guess this is how I see my future. Like, keep learning stuff. Well, you're not just learning, you've also created this. I mean, this is the fruit of everything you've just described, am I right? I guess so. I try to do, like, it's not easy to, in a one show, yeah. to uh, sum up uh, everything you do, you know. But I try to do my best because I wanted this to be a big celebration uh, of all the music I've been doing for 20 years. So I had on stage at some point on some musics like over than 200 people playing, um, almost everyone I could invite. Actually, you were, you remember? I called you, I wanted you to be That's guests right. of this. I would have loved to be a part and, of this. And now you were busy. I saw this. You couldn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> he was busy, he couldn't come, but I wanted you to be part of this. And everyone I really loved and I, I wanted to, put in this, you know, it's like, it's like uh, you're doing a party for your birthday and you try to invite all the people you love. So that, that, this is exactly what happened. And in, in this place, which is the biggest concert hall in France, we were 17,000 people dancing, singing, whistling, creating. For how long? For four, four hours. Yeah, it was a very long concert. It was pretty much what we're gonna do now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So you re literally re re uh, redefined what it is to be an instrumentalist. I mean, I'm looking at this picture. It's pretty. It's, it's pretty mind blowing. You know, it looks it looks so real. Do, do you do you sometimes step back and look at your life and do, does it seem real to you? I never look back. That's <laughs> that's the first time I'm doing this. <laughs> no, I never look back. Always, always forward. Always forward. Yeah. All right. Personal question now. 
do you have a love me room at home? You know, with all the prizes you've accumulated since your childhood, no. all the no, no. Okay, that's healthy. No, no, <laughs> it's healthy. You said no, it's trap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know. You know, all those prizes. I mean, it, of course, it's it feels great, uh, and uh, but it's nothing. You know, it's just. Um, it's like, it, 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 of course, you feel um, it's it's good for the ego, right? It's great for if it's great for ego. You feel ah, powerful, and <laughs> you know. But but the reality is that it's just people telling you that you're doing a good job and encouraging you to keep doing a good job. You know, it's not like okay, I made this, I did this, and now I'm I can rely on it. No, it's like you know, it's like. Um, like looking at those awards, it's it's more like watching great pictures of the past. So you watch it, you say, "Oh wow, it was cool." Okay, let's go now. You know, you don't stay too long. If you stay too long, then you're sad, right? Nostalg nostalgic and all this. Yeah, I I look forward. Got you. Stuck in the past is not a healthy place to be. I understand that. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Pull from it to build for the future. Yeah. Got exactly. you. Got you. So you know where you're from. What do you like to do when you're not playing or writing music when you're not doing anything related to making music? Spend time with my family. Uh, I've been touring for so many years. I mean, with those guys here, we've been playing like f now. I've been touring since 2005, between 100 and 160 concerts a year. So it's like... Wait, 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 say that again? <laughs> like every three days, I'm out one day, so or two days. So I seem even even sometimes less than this because with the travels, you know what it is, right? With the travels and sometimes when it's very far. So I, I I I don't see so much my family. I think it's the most important thing in my life. Even if you decide, if you ask me to choose between music and family, I would say family. And I think now it's time for me to find a balance between doing what I'm doing in music and family. So I would say, if you ask me this question, I would say spend time with my daughter and with my family and all the people I love. My grandmother, she's 97 years old. She's the best person in this, in Earth. Aww. I just want to spend time with her before she's uh, gone. Yeah, all this. What's your daughter's name? Lily. What's her, how old is she? She's nine. Hello, Lily. <laughs> you should be sleeping now. What are you doing? It's 11 p.m., 11.30. Go sleep. Does she play an instrument? She, she played flute, she, play, she sings a lot. Uh, she loves creating music and she does videos also. She's always, you know, anyways. So she already has that artistic, artistic vibe. Yeah. She, she doesn't have to be a musician, no pressure. Mm. But uh, she's sleeping now, she's not. Good, she, good, she went good. She right won. away, when I said go to sleep, she went. <laughs> See, yeah, no joke with me. <laughs> All right, I have a little game here for you. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna start some sentences mm -hmm. and you're gonna finish them. Okay. All right. I am terrified of... Um, in, uh, in, injustice? Injustice? Injust How do you say this? Injustice. That's injustice. Really, yeah. That's deep. Very good. All <laughs> right. That's, that's terrifying. Yeah, it is. All right. The concert I attended that changed my life was... Um, 1995, Michael Jackson in Parc des Princes, Paris. I was there too. You were there? Absolutely. Which one? There were two concerts. The yeah, first yeah, or the both. Both. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Kim Wilde was opening for him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> that was you. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the moonwalk. It was me. <laughs> Are you, it, was, it was breathtaking. Yeah, it was yeah. crazy. Absolutely. It was crazy. All right. The one time I panicked on stage was when? Um, panicked. I think one day we were doing a concert in, uh, in Belgium and for some reason the technical stuff didn't work and it was an important concert for me and I was like, I can't do anything. So I went to the piano and I started improvising on the piano and I was terrified. It was maybe the first time I improvised on piano in front of people. It was like 12 years ago or something. How many people in the audience? Not so many, like maybe three, four hundred. Did they realize anything was going on? Yeah, yeah, they knew. <laughs> 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 Definitely, they could not. <laughs> That's something else. Just we, we're gonna. I'm gonna finish this game later. But why do you feel the need to get the audience participation 
in your show so much. I mean, very few people do this these days. You know, uh, the mo I, I think that when you're creating music, it's important that you express yourself, but in the same time, people also express themselves. It's not only it's it's ju it's not just a one-way thing. It it should be in the both in both ways. You know, so that's why even when we play very complicated music, uh, I'm I try to make it sound easy to listen to, and you know that like the music we're gonna play uh, tonight, today, tonight, today. <laughs> Uh, is, is when you listen to it, you, 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 may, you might not even feel why it would be complicated because you just nod and dance on. But if you count, if you count the, the number... But not only that, we're going to come back to that later, but you, you, <laughs> make, you make them sing. Yeah, you sing, are, dance. I mean, I watched the show. You, you got, you, the, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's, there's some amazing moments where the, the audience is really a, an in, in, uh, uh, um, integrated in, in your the show. Band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a moment where I see a bunch of folks dressed in, in casual clothes. Uh, what, Dancing what? on stage. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Phenomenal. it's yeah. phenomenal. It's, it's great because you're doing a great uh, publicity for this life. <laughs> That's great. Talk about it. Talk. <laughs> All right. Um, when I was little, I would have never imagined that. Uh, that I would be one day working with Quincy Jones. And, and sharing something. And I, I'm, I have to say that I'm very grateful that they helped organizing this uh, YouTube session. And uh, yeah, thank you. The best musical piece of advice my mother or my father ever gave me was? I wouldn't say they gave it, but I used to hear my, my mother play it. It's the... Um, all the Bach, Bach music, you know, and for example, I love all the Bach piano inventions. Da, 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 I'm, I'm sorry, let me make sure you understood no. my question. Conseil, le meilleur conseil musical, conseil, yeah. the best piece of advice. Ah, advice, I thought yeah. piece of music. Meilleur conseil musical que tu um, as well. I, I would say just believe in you. My father used to give me lots and lots of self-confidence. He, he, he really in the same time was very, very demanding with me. Like every note I was playing that was not right, he used to say, stop, start again, stop, start again. Even though it happened 200 times, mm -hmm. he would make it start again. But every time it was good, he was telling me, you're doing great, what you're doing is great, and you can feel confident but because what you're doing is good. So I think it's uh, not really um, an advice, but it would be more a way to think. A method? Yeah, like being very... Um, exigent, comment tu dis? Um, uh, demanding. To, with yourself, yes, you know? Yes. But in the same time, feel confident in what you're doing. Like not being scared or sh ashamed or shy or of, uh, of anything you're doing. That's very powerful because most, most I mean, uh, I remember growing up seeing a lot of parents, you know, either, either like hitting you on the fingers where you were ma making a, oh. playing a bad note on the, on the piano or hitting you throughout the face yeah. if you couldn't do your math or do your homework. So it's very, it's very uh, yeah. powerful that uh, he was able to sh share this with you. Um, all right. I dream of playing with... You, man. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's already done. That's, that was that was no, easy. We're going to do this. We're going to do this soon. All you had to do was ask. <laughs> <laughs> what about what about out there in the world, folks you haven't met with? I don't know. I don't really know. I don't think this way. I've never think. Th I've never been thinking this way. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I've always uh, just uh, you know everything. Like for example, there are great musicians that nobody knows about, and when I hear them, I say, Ah, oh, I want this in my band. I want play with this person. Person. It's not only, it's not about a name or something, it's just a, a feeling. It's like when people ask me what's the best music you've heard or what are the 10 best songs or something. I never can answer this because for me, it could be not necessarily a song, but part of a song or a harmony or a rhythm at some part in the song. So it's very difficult to answer those questions. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I ask it. Yeah. So last one, mm -hmm. I am in love with? Uh, my daughter. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying earlier that um, you wanted to be a scientist. Yeah, I wanted to be an architect. Yeah, specifically an architect. And how I was doing you, how science, do you, uh, studying sciences. How do you create the bridge between architecture, math, and, and what you're doing today? Well, it's, it's what I was trying to say a few minutes ago. Like, you know, <laughs> the, the, the complexity of the music a built. You know, uh, when you see a house, you see just like walls and roof and doors inside and windows, but under this, you know, underground, you have 
crazy work that that they did before before to be able to put those walls the foundation the foundations yes. so i would say that the foundations of my music are very complex so this is all the architecture you know but when you listen to the music so when you when you look at the building it's very simple and very easy square triangles you know so you just nod and dance on can i show you this yes please please demonstrate should we start maybe okay so look for example like some some of the musics are are, are in 19 uh, uh, 19 on a 7. That, that doesn't mean anything to or me. Or 17, yeah, 17 on a 5. This kind of complex stuff, but when you listen to this, you don't feel like, okay, w the one we're going to start with uh -huh. is a 27. So at some point, at the end of the music, you actually hear uh, 9 times 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, you see? But, but the way I cut this 27, in all the beginning of the song mm. is seven seven six seven, which is one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven one two three four six one two three four five six seven dun 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 Thank you, Fred. Fred, do your name.
Thank you, thank you, thank you.
So I need you to sing with us something else now, uh, because I, I could hear that you know how to sing. So it's called Red and Black Light, and it's the, uh, <clears throat> the, the like the title of the not the, not my previous album, but the, the one before, the one we were celebrating in uh, Bercy. So we had uh, <laughs> 17,000 people singing this, and I'm sure you're going to do much better than that. So it was also the, the music I composed for a, a movie. Called uh, Dans les forêts de Sibérie, for those who knows. Lots of noise, so you need to sing loud. Ready? Ready for this? One, two, three.
Merci beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup. Thank you. It was great, great to be with you this afternoon, this night. For those who are with us in uh, France, in Lebanon, or I don't know where, it was great to be here. Thank you, uh, which is those production productions to help us to do this. Thank you, YouTube, for uh, inviting us. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, thank you, Fred Yonet. Now we are expecting you very soon on stage. Uh, this will be our last uh, last music with you today, and uh, it's called Free Spirit. Thank you again. I hope we'll be back very soon. Actually, we'll be back very soon, since uh, we are doing a tour in the U.S. in March, and we'll be in Los Angeles with this band playing a full concert. Thank you again. Bye bye.
Stéphane Galland, Eric Lenini, Alejandro, Arda, Sam, thank you so much. A bientôt.